Hello and welcome to part 2 of the lighting tutorial series. In this one we'll add some more lights, add some more story to the scene as well. Do the finishing touches, render it out, do a little bit of compositing as well. And then we'll be done. Let's dive in. So we can see right now that we got some light leaking here to the top right. I don't want that to happen. And that means that we have a light there that should not be there. Beautiful. <laughs> Alright, and if it would be this light, it would mean that we have to just move it down a little bit. Okay, keep that in mind. Beautiful. I think this already looks quite nice. Perhaps this light can be a bit stronger even. Right, something like that looks quite beautiful. Maybe 150. There we go. And then I want a light to come from this room as well. Like I told you guys before, I want there to be a story behind this first door, for example. Right, the way to do that is by adding a light. Right, something is going on in there or something is still on from... A long time ago so we add a little light there Sh hold shift right mouse shift a light area rx90 and let's shape this into something that actually can go into the room now the reason why i don't pick a spotlight here or a point light is because we will have in my idea a room here like that beautiful 3d drawing right there a room that has a point light here and I'm not going to create the entire room. Obviously, it's too much work for just light in there. But this light is going to bounce inside of this room to the bottom, to the sides. It's going to bounce more, more. And altogether, we will end up with a little bounce light that enters this room through this hallway. Right? Through that limited little angle we have. Like that. Right, so that is how it enters, and I'm just going to resemble that with a little area light. Right, and I can shape this however I want. So we have a little bit more control. Beautiful, make sure it doesn't intersect with your actual door. Scale it down slightly, perhaps, something like that. And I don't want this to shine horizontal, so I'm going to rotate this a little bit around uh, X. There we go. So we we'll just shine a bit down. There we go. Something like that already looks nice. So let's see in our render view how that looks. It is very soft, 10 watts, so it's not strong. But if I set this to be, for example, 200, I think we chose the wrong door here. Yeah, this door is not really in camera view. So let's move this a bit to the left, to the next door, right? It doesn't matter. And now you can see in our camera view that we're getting some light that actually enters our room from that door, all right? Isn't that interesting? And I'm gonna just scale this down a little bit more. Rotate it a bit more as well, so it matches that angle a bit more. And now you can see that we got some nice light ending from the room. Perhaps it can be even stronger, All right? Something like that. And let's just select this point there. And let's just set this to zero for a sec to see how that looks, right? So now we can see we got some light entering through that room. And I want that to be quite visible, which means that I'm going to turn down the value of this point light just a little bit. So perhaps 50. There we go. So we still have some light coming from that point light, um, but nothing too crazy, right? So we still have this light to be our prominent light. Amazing. All right, so this is looking quite nice. I don't like the blue, though, in my background. So in my world settings, or sorry, my render settings, I'm going to just hit transparent, and I will fix the background in post, <laughs> right? It is really that easy. Now, with your light here set up, Right, when every light is set up the way you want this to be, you can start just tweaking, for example, your world settings a little bit. Because the world settings, I find usually, um, they always look nice at the start, but when you add more and more lights, you may just want to change that a little bit. Right, for example, I don't want that left wall to be um, catching that much light, because it will make it look like this light is less strong. So I just want the light to oh, enter from the top left perhaps or we could even move this a little bit so it shines more it's more of a side sideways light chance there we go let's rotate this a bit more see what it does right there's no limitations to how long you should spend on setting up your lighting you just do whatever feels good i even like this a bit where it just shines on the ground so what i'm gonna end up doing is i'm gonna let it shine this way, because I don't want to give the viewers the idea that there is one light that shines from the left, right? 
And if we do that, so if we would have that little light spot on this wall, it would match too much with the light coming from this direction, which will make it look perhaps like there is no room there on the left, but just outside world that is shining in. So that's not what I want, right? So I'm going to leave that like this. So they are for more of a contrast vibe. And I'm going to click on this light and just make it a bit more yellow because that is usually what lights indoor do, right? If it's not a light coming from the outside, um, we usually have more of a light um, yellow light, right? Something like this, looking quite interesting, I'd say. So perhaps we can um, crank up this value just a little bit like that, perhaps even 200. Um, but I am going to move it back right to the next lamp because it matches or it interfer interferes too much with the one at the bottom there. Right, so if that happens, I'm just moving my lights somewhere else, somewhere that makes more sense or gives more clarity to the viewers. Right, that's very important. Clarity. Why is something there? Why is something happening? Why did you make a specific choice? Something that really helps read the image, I guess. So let's try this instead. Go to render view. Let's see how it looks. I think that looks way better. We can now even crank this up a bit more, I'd say. So we get more bright. There we go. This looks quite quite cool. Um, I want this to be nice and dark because it is abandoned after all. We get some nice reflections there at the bottom. Quite nice. So let's see if we can actually crank our world up to one. See how it looks. I quite like that. We have some more reflections here. It looks a bit better. If we set this to zero, you can see how it looks with just the lights we added. Right. So the HDRI actually adds a lot of reflections and color into our scene. So that is why I recommend trying it at least or trying some different ones. Um, so I'm going to end up with this. And this background not being there totally doesn't matter, right? I will just render this out as a PNG, take it into a different software, or even edit this in Blender and add a background manually, right? Something you have more control over, something that matches more with your actual scene, right? So I render this out, show you the results. Now, once your render is complete and you like the results, we can just go back to Blender and we can actually start heading into the compositor. Right, so the compositing window, um, you can either go there at the top of your screen, or if you like to stay in the layout, you can open up a new window by just dragging and setting this to be the compositor. Right, and then obviously we need to use the notes, and um, that way we're actually going to use what is inside here. And if we want a backdrop image, right, if we really want to see what is going on, we can just hit the backdrop, and we will have um, our image there. Control Shift, and click on our image, image, and there we go our image is in the background, right? So now we can start doing some math, or not math, but some magic in between here, right? So what is something that we need to add here? Well, we could, for example, add a background image. So if we hit Shift A and find an image, and we open up any image you want, right? And I'm just gonna open up one that I have on my, in my download folder, it's a sun, and we can just mix those two together, right? So shift A, and we can just, for example, use a mix a color or just maybe even a alpha over, right? And then we can add this image and this image. And then this one has to go there. And then it's going to be in the background, right? Isn't that interesting? So now we have some clouds there in the background. Looks quite nice. And we can even add some bright and contrast there if I want this to be more contrasty. Um, yeah, there we go. We need a lot of contrast. Not that much, like 10 perhaps. So it's a bit darker and matches the overall style, a little bit more of the render. And uh, then something else I'm going to add is some glare. So I'm going to drag this to the right, Shift A, and find a glare node. And by default, I'm going to set this on the fog glow because I enjoy that more, right? You can see it on those lights, the reflected light is going to be glowing up a little bit more, right? So if we set this too high, we're getting more quality and we can set the size to be larger or smaller, depending on what you're looking for. I'm going to set this at eight and the mix. I'm just going to set this to minus 0.5, perhaps. There we go. So it's not that strong, but it's there, you know. And then I'm also going to hit shift A and fight the sunbeams. 
drag that in between. And what the sunbeams is going to do, and we need to mix that up, shift A with a mix color, set that to screen, this into the second, and our original image into the first. There we go. And now we have actually got a sunbeam node here. And if we increase the ray length, we're going to be adding some sun rays, right? And it may not look perfect right away, but that is because our sun is by default coming from the back, right? So this is not really looking at the sun in your scene or the lights in your scene. So we will have to fake that a little bit. But we can set the position on the right and on the, the vertical, right? The horizontal and the vertical axis. So let's say that the um, vertical has to be 0.9, right? We have to up that a little bit. And let's say this has to be 0.6. Or maybe 0.65. Let's see. Let's see what happens there. Something like that already looks quite interesting, right? So uh, we are in luck because in this case, our glare is actually not coming from the background because there is no real light source there that Blender knows to add sunbeams to. But it's actually creating sunbeams from our light posts, right? As you can see, the light spots on our light posts is actually the part that is being glare once you're satisfied a little bit here with how well it looks right then. your settings are nice um, you can just go to render and view render and right, you, you can, can really change your the image all right so well i hope you enjoyed this tutorial series too. and, and if you did please leave a like or comment or subscribe we will enjoy right. any one of those Beautiful. and then we'll see you in the next one cheers